Welcome! My goal with this series is to teach my current workflow from Blender to Unreal Engine 4 so that others can understand what took me two years in maybe a few weeks. My workflow is extremely direct and impatient. It's Blender 2.8. There's plenty of interface tutorials to show you around and how to move the windows to what you prefer, so I'm not going to go over the basic stuff. What I will go over is my reasoning for this setup, what I'm using, and why. Also, to change the background color of the viewport is right here in the preferences under Themes, 3D View, Theme Space, Gradient Colors. It's buried pretty deep. It's important to have a personal theme so you don't feel like you're staring at a blank piece of paper. The reason I have mine set up like this is because I'm used to Mika Mika Moving and video editors like HitFilm Express. It allowed me to convert my workflow from there to Blender in a matter that makes sense to me. And so you should adjust what makes sense to you. I use the outliner at the bottom left to control what I see in the scene and get performance help from that in case the scene is kind of crowded. The preferences are on the left because I'm left-handed. Then at the bottom we have the dope sheet and another layer under that which only shows the header for the timeline, which is all it's useful for. I'm using the info header at the bottom right to move the timeline frame adjustment stuff closer to everything because having it at the far bottom right just does not make sense to me. I also have a chat and music window there when I stream. Shortcuts. When it comes to using shortcuts, you want to adjust everything to be as comfy as possible for your workflow. I used to use a Joy-Con that disconnected often before I got this sick Logitech mouse that has like a bunch of buttons on the side. I personally hate having to reach for the keyboard for every little thing, so having this is so damn comfortable. The key to adjusting your settings is while you're working through a project. Is this shortcut kind of weird to remember or out of place? Do I save often? What about undo and redo? I want this process to be more direct, damn it. Eventually you'll fill out each of the things you use in your process and have a highly customized setup for you. And I will be mentioning each shortcut I personally use and what it's assigned to as I go along. Add-ons. So I have cell fracture for recorded physics destruction that I'm still getting used to. Cats, for all of my MMD model importing needs, since the MMD tools was grandfathered into it, it's a must. Dynamic context menu. So I broke a few shortcuts because I wanted right click to be turning the camera and middle click to be panning. Being able to simply move the mouse wheel to the side and getting an awesome menu to pop up is amazing. Speaking of menus, take advantage of Q for quick favorites. I set this to be one of the side buttons on the mouse because the quick menu is so damn useful for accessing things you don't want to search a laundry list of options for. Plus it's contextual so you can have different options when you use it in the dope sheet or other menus. Add mesh, extra objects, I forgot why I have this. I think it's because I create empty accesses for objects for Unreal Engine exporting support. But I probably won't need it as I get used to this last one. Blender for Unreal Engine on GitHub. This can export your work and materials from Blender to Unreal Engine 4 perfectly. Not only that, it can add empty accesses and the stuff you need for things to work properly. I haven't gotten used to it yet, but it's already saved me hours upon hours of work, so I expect once I know more, it'll only continue to save me more on the export process. Like, all the materials are saved and applied when you export to Unreal Engine. Do you know how much time that saves? Hours. Because Unreal Engine and the way it applies materials is different from Blender, so FBX files don't usually apply any materials whatsoever and you gotta reapply it all the time with game engines. It sucks. But this completely saves all of that. These other two I'm still getting used to. Like lock view to active object is actually pretty great for fast scenes where the camera stays behind and the characters like sliding down a roof or running away. And then onion tools I haven't quite used yet, but apparently you can see the past, present, and future while you're animating. Very interesting. I'll link all of these in the description.